Hi, welcome to this month's Learning with Loden. Uh, this month's Learning with Loden, we're going to have several different guests that we'll be talking about uh, the mental health supports that we have in Nixon Public Schools. And uh, we have some great partnerships. We have over nine FTEs now with Burl. We have three internal social workers, plus we have our counselors and a lot of different programming. I mean, we just want to share with our community the resources that we have to help meet the needs of our employees and our students and families. And just so you'll know what we have and what's available. And look forward to just being able to give an overview of all the different mental health supports that we have in the schools. Thanks for being here and being part of this month's Learning with Loden. Hello and welcome to another edition of Learning with Loden. I'm Zach Rance and today we are going to talk about a very important topic which is mental health. Now we're not going to get really deep into the topic but we're really going to talk about resources available to our students and our families and our staff um, and ways you can access those to just get more information to make sure that you're uh, aware of all of the great resources we have here at Nixa. And to start off with, I am here with our social workers, two really awesome people that I, we get to work with each other on a lot of different ways. But first, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves and then tell me a little bit about what a social worker does. Okay. I'm Jen. And I'm Regina. And we are the district social workers. We are primarily at the junior high and high school, but we serve the whole entire district. Mm -hmm. um, Really what a social worker does is a, a variety of things. So we can link resources to families that need it. We can help um, add that extra layer of support for students. We team up with the counselors and the nurses, um, the admin, and we just are able to help kids um, teach them coping skills so they can be more successful adults. Um, I serve as the homeless liaison, so I can identify families that might be considered homeless and then just get them set up with affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, we also work on our crisis team. Um, I'm the mental health officer, so whenever there's a crisis, we work as a team through the whole mental health team. So Jen and I are both licensed therapists, as are a lot of our counselors. And so while we don't do individual therapy with students, we're able to like hook them up with resources and um, also work within and their families like help their parents and talk about different ways to cope. And and I think that's that's something that you guys brought up is a, a lot of the resources or the things that we do go from those day-to-day -day skills mm -hmm. all the way up to like really in-depth things that people, you know, need need to work through. And so so as we're talking about mental health and those coping skills, like what's a good example uh, of coping skills that you can teach students on to use like on a day-to-day -day basis? I think at the high school level and even junior high, it's um, there's a lot of anxiety and depression anxiety. in the students that we see. So anxiety taking tests, anxiety being around a group of people. So just teaching different strategies, um, having like a reset room, having the quiet room down in the counseling office, mm -hmm. having a quiet space even in our office that they can go to, yeah. drinking a bottle of water might even seem yeah. like the littlest mm -hmm. thing to do. Get a snack. Um, yeah, some yeah. kids haven't eaten all Snacks day. Are good. Mm -hmm. Snacks. Um, and, and oh, and the appropriate type of snack. Yes. Like yes. that sounds like I've yes. as a former high school teacher. That was the the one thing I learned. Too, like the kid walks in with a Dr. Pepper and a candy bar for breakfast, like they're gonna crash it probably. Work. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, work. Anymore. Exactly. Their brains don't work. Yeah. I that's actually one of the first questions I asked. Did you eat breakfast? Mm -hmm. And the, usually it's no, I had a Red Bull. Mm -hmm. And so of course you're gonna be even more anxious because yeah. you're caffeinated. But. And sometimes um, students just want to come in and talk it out yeah. and then cry mm -hmm. and then they're able to they go back to better. class. And, yeah. and that's a really good th thing that I've noticed is a lot of times we don't think like that's okay. That's an emotion to have. Yep. And a feeling to have, and sometimes you just need to process through through that. And so that's a it's a place where they can come and students they're teenagers, yeah. you know, like and they're yeah. like, I don't know what to do with this emotion. I'm feeling emotions, and you guys do you just kind of help walk them through that. Yeah, if yes. they want to talk, we'll talk. If they just want to sit there and cry and have a moment and gather themselves back mm -hmm. up, we let them do that. Like I don't, you know, we meet them where they're at. So whatever they need, they're the experts in themselves. So we mm -hmm. just guide them through those big emotions. We have big emotions as adults too, yeah. and so just teaching them that it's going to be okay. Um, sometimes it's reminding them what their coping skills are. I, I was just going to yeah. ask you, okay. Because yeah. sometimes when you're completely overwhelmed and anxious, you can't even remember what's even going to help me. And so Jen and I say some things. Would you like to be quiet? Do you want to listen to some music? Would you like, what would help? And then they're like, well, I really like to listen to my music. And then they put their earbuds in, they listen, they can move on. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, all the way here this morning, I listen to my music because that's one of my coping skills. <laughs> so we all have coping skills. It's just sometimes remembering them. And I think, so you're, you're really, you're helping teach them those day-to-day -day skills that, because 
you're going to be anxious in your job. Absolutely. You're going to be anxious in a relationship. You're going to be anxious in all these mm-hmm. things. So these little coping skills, it's okay to have emotions. Mm-hmm. It's maybe how we handle those emotions is where we can get ourselves tripped yes. up. Would that be a way, good yeah. way to say it? Yeah, and I we talk a lot about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable because mm-hmm. sometimes kids have a really, even something that you or I, it might just be like, oh man, this day has not been that great. For them, it's catastrophic. Mm -hmm. So you just learn how to deal with feeling uncomfortable for a short time and getting through the day. And that's right. So as we teach students and parents and families and teachers, everybody, how to deal with those individual things that helps them in future things because they're able to reuse those skills that you've taught them Mm -hmm. and on how to, I know I need five minutes alone. And that's a great... Yeah. Coping skill. And do you do you also teach them maybe how to be vocal about that to those around them? Yeah. I talk would, a lot about communication, yeah. I think. Yeah. And being honest about how you're feeling. And it's we try to normalize things. Like yes. we say, I can't tell you how many kids I've already seen today yeah. that have done this. You know, and then they're like, Oh, so other people feel this way? And I think that makes us all feel better that we're not alone in feeling anxious or depressed. And and I love that you you teach them that, like to just tell people, I need five minutes. Yeah. Because it's being your own advocate about what you need is sometimes the worst thing that like we're the worst thing to do like for us like personally is like we 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 don't aren't our best advocates but learning how to be your best advocate of i need five minutes can you just i need to like breathe for five seconds and then we can move on um or how to be vocal about the day that you're having um and especially with those closest around you your teachers your family like i'm having a bad day I'm going to let you know now that <laughs> might be a little short or whatever yeah. else. And so just, but you know, that's what I'm here for, uh, you know, and that's what your friends are there for. And that's yeah. what you guys are there for. Yeah. So what other things, like what are some other things that you maybe help them uh, address that we've not talked about? I think that if um, kids have to, they're struggle with a lot of different things. So if it's something that's more than just the coping skills, we can refer them to outside therapists. Mm-hmm. We have partnered with Burl at the school, yes. and so they can do on-site counseling there. Um, so just really figuring out what their needs are and then talking to the guardians. Um, I think a, a big part of our job is that family liaison piece. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really do try to bridge the gap between school and home and try to have a yes. voice for the, the student yes. and say, hey, they came in, they're feeling really anxious a lot of days. Like, are you noticing that at home? Mm-hmm. What kind of resources might, might you need? Like, we even can do in-home um, resources. Mm-hmm. Like, if they are really struggling with um, even their parenting or, like, oh, yeah. we always say, like, we wish there was a handbook about how to raise teenagers. <laughs> so, you know, so, like, yeah. and it's a struggle. So, you know, like, I just, so if they need support at home, like, how to set boundaries, how to have consequences, you know, how to have a positive relationship and communication. Because every, every person's different. Yes. And I yes. think that that's, that you brought that up multiple times is every, they, what worked well with one of their children may Absolutely. not work well with that somebody else. That happens in our lives. Yes. So, yeah. yes. And like, and I'm, I'm, I'm completely different than you guys. And yeah. so like, we've talked about the, those individual things quite a bit and just learning about yourself or learning how to handle others or deal with others and interact with others. And then also being your best advocate. But I I think the best thing that you said there is that you guys are a resource. Absolutely. And so we want students to, to stop by and go, I don't know what to do. Like, well, like, like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> even if you don't know what to do, like, I, I think a lot of people have even come to our door and been like, can I come in? We're like, yeah, yes. sure. <laughs> like, and I don't even think they know what to say. So it's, it's totally fine. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and that's, and that's the best thing is walk in your door yeah. for parents Call, email, yeah, walk in your door. Absolutely. Students walk in your door, and then that's this. Let's open that conversation. And let's figure out what we all need together because mental health is a is a multi pronged approach to figure out what everybody needs mm-hmm. and figure out who you are as an individual and what you need to help you cope and deal and process things. Um, you know, I've had you know I was in a tornado when I was four, and honestly, it. I was probably like 18, 19 before I fully processed through that. It's not like an, it's yeah. not a, it's not a, you're immediately like fixed and it, you don't it, wake up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. You need help. Yeah. It's, yeah. And so I think that's a great thing. So what we want you guys to do is stop by, reach out to our social workers. If you're not sure how to reach out to them, they're on our website. 
call the front office of your, your school. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ways to reach out. Just don't be afraid to reach out to us and we will get you connected. And then two, uh, encourage your students to stop by their office. If they're not sure how to access those resources, we want you to know that it's okay just to stop by. And, and that's a great thing. It's so, okay to not be okay. It's okay. It? Yeah, that's a great. That's, I love it. Yeah, that's a, it's okay to not be okay. And we're all here to help you figure out how we can process through these things together. So we want to thank you guys thank for being you. here for this. Like, I know it's a little short introduction, but th the main thing with mental health is knowing that there are resources out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And, and if we, we don't know the answer, we will find the answer. That is perfect. Yeah. Yep. So thank you guys so much. And stay tuned for part two. We've got more people to talk about mental health. All right, well, welcome back for part two of kind of mental health resources, and I am here with one of my friends. We've known each other for the longest time, um, lots of stories together, kind of think Nick's a grad, woo, kind of thing. <laughs> well, Carrie, why don't you just introduce yourself and tell a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Hi, I'm Carrie Stormzan, and I am currently a high school counselor. I have worked in NICSA for quite some time as both a teacher and a counselor at both the elementary and secondary settings. So worked on a lot of committees in relation to mental health and crisis. So um, You've, happy a, to help. Yeah, a little, little bit of everything. Yeah. So uh, in the grand like scheme of things, like how do our counselors fit into that those that mental health resources and uh, just the, the waste uh, you kind of connect students with with care, provide care, provide resources. Like, what does that look like? Well, counselors are here for all students. Yeah. I mean, it's a comprehensive program, what our roles are in the school. And in relation to mental health, like, we are that first, like, mm -hmm. on the ground, working with all the kids every day. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we are the first ones to recognize if there's something going on. Um, at the elementary level, I mean, that could be as quick as kindergarten screening when, yeah. you know, kindergartners yeah, yeah. are coming. Yeah. in or you know at the high school level I mean we do things as far as academics and you know doing those types of pieces but a lot of times it's more than just that and so with us having access to like 100% of the student population it's certainly a good way to assess who may or may not have more intense needs and I know and I, I like what you said you you guys really do deal with everything from an academic standpoint to a mental health standpoint but those are all touch points to really check in with the kids and kind of see like, um, oh, okay, so-and-so's like, their college plans or their career plans have changed, that's a red flag, or that's something that we need to talk about, or just, you guys get to know them well enough to where you can kind of just, and I know there's a lot of students, but you guys do work so hard to make sure that you're interacting with the kids to where you can really kind of like watch for those things that maybe like, mm, we need to look at that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um we do. We work with like all the students and definitely get to build those relationships. And so when you do have those relationships, which is a key component to, to knowing mental health. And, you know, I like to think about mental health as no different than physical health. We all have it. It's a piece like sometimes our physical health is, you know, in tip top condition. Um, sometimes our mental health is in a, a great condition where our mindset's like on point and we're doing you know, like being our best selves. And other times it's not. And, you know, it's just part of life of those ups and downs. But certainly as counselors, when we have relationships with the majority of our students, we can definitely like something seems a little off, you know, I mean, or like this student doesn't typically fail a course mm -hmm. or this student doesn't typically miss this much mm -hmm. school. So, you know, like at the high school level, I like to say an F doesn't necessarily just mean a failing grade. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, we're able to dig into those pieces a little bit more and find out what's going on and then have the opportunity to have those initial conversations. And then we have supports, obviously mm -hmm. with our social workers where you got to hear a little bit about what they do and other resources within um, the school setting with Burl. And if we need to do any referrals or anything like that. But like I said, just hitting that ground running with the initial conversations and being able to have as many relationships as possible to where you can identify if there's a need. So, and I know you guys, it's, it is kind of like everybody's coming through the counselor's office all the time. Like how accessible are you to students? What do they need to do if they have questions? Can you stop by, set up an appointment? What does that look like? Yeah. And I think at every level, I think it's important to know it's different. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've worked, um, elementary and high school and you know elementary counselors get out into the classroom so they're you know certainly readily available at the high school level we're, we're in the classroom as well it may look a little different not as um, regular 
but certainly um, we're accessible by you know showing up, mm -hmm. um, email. A lot of students you know just do that, um, and like every student's different. I mean, some students like to be called out of class. Some students like want that to be like pretty quiet. You know, like send me an email and tell me when to show up. And and we all operate under those conditions to like meet like a kid where they are. Um, and that's a great. I, you guys are very confidential. And so mental health is something that can be very private. It can be very public. It can be whatever that student needs. But you guys aren't out there calling out kids and, like, showing, you know, like, so-and-so needs help. Like, you're you're very, very private with all of those discussions and those needs. Is, Absolutely. How important is that to a student? Absolutely. It is so important for, and I think that goes back to the relationship. Um, and I think that's important to bring up is we are confidential. And what we hear a lot, too, is sometimes if we have those relationships and a student might say, I'm concerned about a friend. Mm -hmm. Well, if that relationship's not in place, we're not going to hear about that. We right. may not know because of someone may not feel comfortable coming forward I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say you're it struggling. No, it, it really I mean, is. it's hard for me to like say I'm having a rough day because yeah. I'm typically a positive person. So when I'm down, it's like, I don't like how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So why does anyone else want to know about this? But the truth of the matter is people need people. Mm -hmm. And all people need people. And we need those supports. And we certainly have like a broad range of supports within Nixa Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, it's like building that trust and having the confidence in like where we tell students all the time, like we appreciate your you know, mm -hmm. courage to come forward to share, you know, you will never be mentioned that you came forward. Um, our practice is, you know, hey, you have some, like if we go talk to the next person, like I hear you're struggling, you have someone that cares enough about you to let me know, let a trusted adult know, you know, I'm here for you. Like, what can we do? Where do we need to go from there? And I think that's a good point that we, we've talked a lot about self stuff, but it's also looking out for others to Absolutely. maybe being the advocate for somebody else when they can't, don't, can't have that voice that you, it's okay to be concerned and to go, okay, just to stop by and say, I have a question, I have a concern, what do I do in this situation? And you guys are there just for that because it is, we're all in this together and, and that's really important. And I like to always make those parallels between physical health and mental health. I mean, if you break your arm, you may need someone to help you carry <laughs> yeah, your like, bag or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it's just that's like, really it, funny, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I think it's just like, when people can recognize those things are so parallel I think that that's where that depth of knowledge improves. And it's like when a friend is struggling, um, you know, when you're struggling and how, like I said, you don't want to be the one that's going forward. And that could be true of like teachers recognizing right. that a student is struggling. A parent, oftentimes I have conversations with parents where they're like, please don't tell my kid I called. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell your kid no. you called. Like I can randomly check in on your kid. And then it's a, it's a partnership. Yeah. I mean, we certainly want to partner with parents and teachers and, you know, just because, we are, like you said, in this together, and all of those supports in place definitely make for a better outcome of, like, you know, that, you know, a future healthy adult. Right. You know, so that's just a continuous yeah, and work like, in and progress. Even as an adult, I'm like, we still, we still struggle. And I think, but I think this has really been the great thing here is like there are resources available, and you don't have to know. You just may know that something's not right and that you need something, but you may not know where to start. So, reach out and we will get you connected to either someone that you, you, you know that you care about as a parent or your child. And the, I think too, um, something we've talked about in the past is, is we need to find the best person to interact with the student or the adult. And sometimes it may not be the parent, it may not be a friend, it may be somebody else that needs to have that conversation because the person that, if they go address it, it's not going to be received well, but somebody else can do it, and it's, it opens doors. Absolutely. I say that all. Such a great point, because I'm a parent of teenagers, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it may be shocking, but, you know, teenagers don't like to listen to their parents. <laughs> However, like, I mean, you, like, maybe I said something to my daughter, but then, you know, one of my counselor colleagues says the same thing to her, and it's like, magic. <laughs> but the point is, it's like, it's just that reinforcement. It's just that stage. And I like to say that to families all the time because it's frustrating as a parent mm -hmm. to be like, my kid is not listening. They're struggling. They won't listen to me to go get help. But, you know, and then another like trusted adult might have some information and then it, it does take it to a different level. And that's okay. That's normal. And it's like for us as counselors and social workers, those are the conversations we can have with families as well, because that's hard yeah. as a parent to be like, why is my kid not communicating with me. And so those are conversations that we have as well to help parents 
parent their kids because we all need that support. You know, I need support as a parent and um, just. The best thing as a parent or a guardian is to find the resources that are out there to help your child, Absolutely. like period. And like that can look in a lot of different ways. And so we just want to make sure that they know that we're out there. So, so I guess as, as a parent or as a student or as an adult in the community, um, reach out. And that's the biggest thing. If you don't know how to get help or you're not sure what to do, just reach out. And we're all about making the connections. We're going to connect you with the right people and find you those right resources. And so call your child's school. Um, we're going to put some emails in the comment section of, of this right here to reach out to people um, as well. And then also at the end of the video, you'll have some contact information as well. But just reach out. Um, ask those questions. And you may not know where to start. And I think that's the thing is you may not know where to start, but just say something. And we can all, as a team and as a community, take it from there to help meet the mental health needs of everybody. Everybody needs a little help, and so reach out and we can do that. So tune in next time for another edition of Learning with Loden.